resources and the effort you've put in, and uh, we're really excited um, to get this partner channel um, on the road. Thank you for being with us, and thank you for sharing your unique perspectives. Огромное большое спасибо вам всем. Thank you very much again from all at the Zero Project, and um, all the best. And I personally look forward to a great partner channel session. Now. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, and we were very happy to be a part of this this wonderful event. We know I've known Zero Project for many years, and this is we really very very honored to be here. And I just want to um, welcome. So, so I can begin. Yep. Yes, right. absolutely. Okay, great. I just want to welcome everyone to our session today. Um, with regard to technical issues, um, I hope that you understand. I mean, if you need translation, there's Russian translation in the corner. You could choose your translation um, down below to, to the far right. Um, if you need captioning, you've got captioning there. You can also choose. There'll be captioning in English. And we have translation into uh, Russian Sign Language and English Sign Language. So we're very, once again, very happy to be here. My name is Denise Rosa. I am the director of the disability organization Perspectiva, and currently we are the secretary of the Business Advisory Board on Disability. Um, they are our co-partners in this event today. And once again, I'm happy to be here and be honored to be running this and moderating this session. I have the honor of being at two zero event uh, conferences in Vienna. Sorry that we can't be here, be in one room together. That would be nicer. Um, but I'm glad that we can do this event as well. So our, social, our session today will focus on collaboration between disabled people's organizations and the business community and how these collaborations can improve employment opportunities for job seekers with disabilities, especially young people with disabilities. We have four wonderful speakers today who will share their experiences and best practices running employment programs. Of course, as part of their, that's of course not their goal, you'll have speakers from businesses, from three businesses, who in addition to running these employment programs have many other responsibilities. Um, three persons, three experts from Russia and one expert from Spain that we are patiently awaiting. It looks like she's not, she hasn't joined us yet, uh, but she will join us, Virginia will join us later. So disability organization Perspectiva is uh, celebrating its 24th anniversary this year. And as I said, we're also the co-founder of the Business Advisory Board on Disability, so the co-partner in today's event. And the goal of our organization is the full inclusion of people with disabilities into the community. Uh, we're based in Moscow, but we have partners in over 20 cities of Russia. And the majority of our staff, 80 persons um, have disabilities. So 80, where we have 80 people on our staff and about 40 people have disabilities. We have seven programs to help include people with disabilities into the community. It's inclusive education, inclusive sports, leadership, universal design, legal advocacy, our disability film festival, and inclusive or competitive employment. We have been running our employment program since 2005. And in 2008, together with members of the business community, we launched the, the Business Advisory Board on Disability. It's a, an informal network of companies in Russia that are committed to equal opportunities in employment for people with disabilities. Uh, today, we serve as the secretary of the board and the Business Advisory Board on Disability is currently uh, has about 50 members in four cities of Russia. Um, we collaborate on a number of different programs we, as I said, we're in a formal network, no fees. Um, we have regular meetings. We have a, di we have a quarterly digest. Um, and we also run business breakfasts and different events uh, like the event we're doing today. Uh, and, but we also have programs like a mentorship program, the path to a career program, many programs that we work with, um, closely collaborate with business in order to improve uh, employment opportunities for first people with disabilities in Russia. Um, Today, uh, we will learn about those programs from members of the board and also learn about similar programs in Spain. We'll learn about, of course, employment and you know, if you've been part of other events uh, the past couple of days at the Zero Project events, you of course will have learned about the different challenges that people with disabilities face to get to gain access to employment and hopefully about some of the successes that people are having gaining access to employment. Some of the key issues that we face also in Russia are issues of 
lack of quality of education, lack of job experience, um, uh, low expectations by members of the community, family members as well, negative attitudes or low expectations by members of the business community or employers, um, inaccessible transportation, inaccessible uh, facilities. And these are just a few of the issues that uh, people with disabilities in Russia face to get access to employment. And some of the stories today that we're going to share with you in the best practices will be about those um, our successes and our efforts to change that situation, improve the situation. Um, a little bit about our speakers. Well, I guess I'll, I'll introduce, I'm not sure if Virginia's here yet. Let me take a look, a quick look. Um, I don't see her. Oh yeah, there she is, Virginia's here. So I will introduce our first speaker. And I'm gonna, each of our speakers has about 10 minutes to speak. But if you are faster, that's wonderful. So if you manage to do your speech, your presentation eight minutes, that's great, because this will just give us more time for questions and answers. There's a chat box, so if you have questions, please put them in the chat box. Um, but we're hoping to have some time at the end for questions as well. Um, so the first speaker is Virginia Carceda Guilera, and I hope I said that correctly. She's from the organization INSERTA, and INSERTA is part of ONCE. Um, and ONCE is a big organization in Spain um, that has, it has many different programs uh, to improve the lives of people with disabilities in Spain. Um, and she currently holds the position of Deputy Director of Training, Employment, and Transportation of, of ONCE, and also serves on INSERTA. And um, we had the opportunity to meet Virginia, uh, it was like two years ago when she, she came to Moscow to participate in one of our conferences. So we're very happy to give her the opportunity to talk about uh, their programs in Spain. Um, so I'm giving you the floor, Virginia. I'm going to turn off my microphone and invite you to join us. Virginia? You need to turn, Virginia, you need to turn on your microphone. Oops, we can't hear you. Can I turn on your microphone? <laughs> no. Um, just a minute, Virginia has disappeared for a second, and I'm so sure she will be here any minute. Uh, there she is. Virginia, you need to turn on your microphone. If... Just a moment. Oh, there we go. Uh, okay, now we can't, no, you need to turn it on again. No, it just went off. Can you do that one more time? You had it on. There it is. It's on. Okay. Right now? No. Yes, yeah, it's perfect. Ah, great. okay. Thank yes, you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you to Perspectiva to invite us to participate in this uh, event. For us, it's a pleasure. It's my pleasure to be here to explain very briefly our experience. When Oksana uh, contacted me uh, to to speak to speak about uh, Inserta and our experience. And, and take into account the, the, um, the, 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 the topic of the conference mentorship is the, the collaboration. Um, we, we think about uh, what's the, 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 the opportunity to explain um, in certain employment, in certain empleo, the uh, entity of uh, expert in human resources of Fundación Once. But also for me, it's important to highlight our uh, improvement, our changes during the, the, the pandemic, because it's true that um, presential face-to-face -face, um, activities are, are, are the key with people with disabilities, but we are able to change our um, way of doing things, but without the, the collaboration of uh, people with disabilities and companies, uh, it would be uh, very complicated. So uh, please uh, go ahead with the, the, the first uh, slide and is that is it work? Yeah. Well, in our presentation, I don't have control of your slide. No, I don't think so. I mean, what's the issue slide? Oh, but the TV, I can share the slide. Yeah. Well, do you have the slides there? Um, no, but I think the um, the um, the hoster is going to pass the slides. Okay, I mean, I see a slide, it's there, but I don't see the first one. If you, I, I'll, I'll try to get, but you can just talk and we will okay. then catch up. Okay. Uh -huh. 
¿no? Sí, sí. Lo primero que you, could you pass the, sli the, 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 the following slide? The next. Yeah, I will ask as someone who's in yeah, there it goes. It's the next slide. Okay, <laughs> right now. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Well, um, in this presentation, why I, I am going to describe very briefly um the, the lines of insert and fundación once uh, in this slide you can see uh, what is the the mission of fundación once and insert and pleo because it's important to highlight the um in our um in our um, approach the employment and training are the most important i i'm happy to to share uh, this this the round table with the companies and also it's important to take into account the aspect of people with disabilities because in one of the uh, most important approach uh, learns lessons in spain is that nothing uh, about us without us so uh, in our mission uh, you can see uh, the, that we have uh, different uh, aspects first of all fundacion 11 is take part of of our social uh, on the social group uh, ONCE Social Group is the most important um, entity in Spain. Uh, it takes um, run from uh, um, 80 years old. I've, and you can see in this slide different figures. Uh, for example, in the number of employees, more than 72,000 employees, and uh, our budgets. And Fundacion ONCE is part of the, of the, um, of the holding, no? Because um, we think that uh, it's important to have examples to the companies that people with disabilities can uh, have different position in their in their companies in their departments. Our priorities are training and employment. First of all, 70 uh, uh, 10%, 70 percent of our budget, and universal accessibility and design for all um, and independent living is the other uh, 30 percent. We think that uh, accessibility without employment and training is not possible, and uh, uh, training and employment without accessibility is uh, not possible as, uh, uh, in either. Because from our point of view, if we have a job position to be um, occupied by people with disabilities, but, you know, the, the, the premises are not accessible, useful for people with disabilities, uh, the companies, um, they, don't, they cannot uh, have people with disabilities working for them. But, also, this accessibility is good for every other uh, workers in the company. So, first question, we understand that for our tutorship or our mentorship, the accessibility and training and, and employment as the, the key. Next, please. Next, please. Um, in this, no, next, next slide. Uh, you can see in this slide, uh, we have uh, different figures. Um, we have figures from uh, 2020 and we have figures from 2019. Um, it's only to show that during the pandemic, uh, the discount, the reduction of um, our, um, our figures uh, were, were important. We go on, go on with our work, with our projects, but it's true that um, the pandemic is changing many things uh, in our point of view. We have different um, activities. First, we have activities for entrepreneurs. We, we uh, co-finance the projects for entrepreneurs. We have grand, uh, grand uh, projects. We, we give uh, support to the entities of people with disabilities to develop projects focused on, on each type of disabilities. And also we have um, companies working with us to develop these projects. In Spain, we have a, um, um, a, a law uh, that uh, um, obliges, we can say, to the companies with more than uh, 50 workers in the staff to contribute people with disability, to hire people with disabilities in 10%, in, in 2%. So um, I think the role of the people with disability, the, the Fundacion Once, is to help companies to uh, make easier this uh, objective. Uh, next, please, next slides. Inserta Empleo is the entity expert in human resources of Fundacion Once. And um, our uh, way of doing uh, working with the companies, we have two different customers. First is uh, people with disabilities as well. 
and other risk companies are the companies who are in, uh, interested in, in contact people with disabilities. And uh, we work with them in, in different uh, role, but both role uh, take into account the tutorship, the collaboration, the mentorship and the partnership. From a point of view, mentorship and, uh, and partnership are both very closely linked. So um, we work uh, before, uh, before the pandemic, our activity was um, the most of uh, the, our activity was uh, based on face-to-face -face, uh, presential activities. But after the, the pandemic, after the lockdown, we are changing to increase our activity in, um, in ICT, and ICT changes. As you can see in this, um, in this slide, we have a Portalento. Uh, this is our training and employment portal. It's totally accessible and we, we allow to, uh, and we have a, a new app, a, a app, and we allow to the um, um, future employers or um, future employees, they have different space where they can um, um, see how the, the, their um, the, the offers uh, or the demands are, how their uh, CV is, uh, is uh, down low or up low. So we have different space, but very focused on, 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 this, on these uh, customers. Um, we focus on software instead of software because we have software platform, uh, different databases, but also soul. Uh, our technical staff is uh, very expert in, ICE and in, in disability, but focus on ability. We take into account the classification of uh, welfare organization with this focus on talents. Next, please. Next slide. Um, with, the, um, with the COVID-19 outbreak, um, the, 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 the desk uh, was uh, shut down. So we focus more in help clients and companies and, and people with disabilities to engage in our in, in their uh, itineraries because for us companies have the itinerary and people with disabilities as well so we focus more in empower people with disabilities we focus more in companies prepare companies um, to co contract people with disability after the, the pandemic after after the lockdown finish and as you can see there in the in the slide, um, the, the, it's true that the reduction of contract of people with disabilities was very important because at the, at the beginning of the lockdown, um, the companies and uh, people with disability themselves, they don't know if they are a risk population or not. So for our point of view, it's important to cooperate, to collaborate, as the, the presentation says, with the clients of the future clients. The next, please. Virginia, you have to um, wrap yes. it up. Yeah, you've got well, you've got thirty seconds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, from our point of view, um, the cooperation and collaboration with the the third with people with disabilities and companies is very important, not only presentially but also uh, digitally. So, uh, for us, uh, our first uh, recommendation and conclusion for for our uh, learns lessons is it's necessary to, um, to empower people with disabilities, but also to empower companies. First, uh, second uh, learn lesson is itineraries for people with disabilities to employment, or at least to, to increase their employability and take into account ICTs uh, and digitalization, and companies as well to have an itinerary with uh, an, uh, an approach of reasonable accommodations. And other question is uh, the transformation, digital transformation is here to stay. Um, now the, 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 the new normality is true and labor, labor uh, telework uh, is a, a new uh, trend for the companies and people with disability is, are ready to, to work on this, um, on this way. But it's important to understand that the companies understand, or, or the, uh, the, the technical provider understand that the accessibility for these new tools is key because if we do not take into account this accessibility and usability, 
we left behind people with disabilities, for example, with um, um, intellectual disability or social, uh, uh, so social disability. So the lesson learned are these, uh, cooperation and collaboration, uh, co-design the projects, co-working co the projects with the companies are important and to answer to real demands of the labor market as well. And the uh, learning and learnability as a trend to uh, ability to learn every time is important and people with okay. disability will be um, a key point for this. Thank, thank you. you and I'm ready for, for the question after the rest of presentation. Thank okay, you. thank you so much, Virginia. Um, and yes, please stay with us because I'm sure there'll be questions at the end. And now I have the pleasure of, and I think we need to remove that presentation. I have the pleasure of, um, of inviting Maria, presenting, introducing Maria Lukashova. Uh, she is one of the coordinators of Microsoft's mentorship program, uh, Get Your Hands on Professional Experience. And she is also a member of the finance department at Microsoft Russia. Maria, together with other coordinators and mentors across the organization, has been driving this program for the last six years. Please, Maria. Thank you. Um, can you please uh, confirm that you can hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yep, we can hear great, you. Great, great. So let me um, share the deck. Um, and hopefully you can, oops, sorry. Uh, Somebody will give me just a second. A beauty of technology, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is something we've all been learning the past eight months and improving our learning. Okay, good. Um, do you see the presentation in a full view or you see like two slides at the same time? Yeah, we see two slides at the same time. Um, but I think that's, um, I wish I could help you, but I'm- No, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Uh, sorry about that. Can you see now the-, the yeah, but it's not in slideshow. You just need to hit slideshow. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay, sorry, something is wrong now on my side. Sorry about that. Okay. okay. Well, I could say while we're waiting, um, I just want to say, okay, <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> No, sorry about that. That's what happens when you have multiple screens. Um, well, I just wanted to say that this is a program that we have been participating in for the board six years. Um, and it's been, actually, we were able to expand the program because of the, I mean, we started expanding it before the pandemic, um, but it gave us a reason to even expand more widely to other cities of Russia. Russia is a big country. We have lots of time zones, like 10 time zones. And so, um, by doing it using more ICT, using um, doing expanding to other cities, and it, we were able to get lots of people involved, people who are seeking jobs, and now we, everything looks perfect. Maria, so I'm just handing the floor to you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Denise, and thank you, Olga, for sharing the slide. Uh, good. So thank you, everyone. It's a really a pleasure for us to be here and share some of our experience. Um, and I'll give you, you can go to the next slide, the other slide. So our program is called uh, Get Your Hands on Professional Experience. And the mission of this program has been to empower students with disabilities to realize their full potential. So a few years ago, with the help of NGO uh, Perspectiva, we met some of the students and put ourselves in their shoes that were not really different from the shoes of every student, including ours many years ago. Uh, when we all studying in universities, we all had very limited understanding uh, in a lot of cases of what selected professions mean in real business environment, um, how learned skills in university can be leveraged in future employment, and really didn't have many opportunities to practice our soft skills. So now times have changed, same as education systems, but we felt that we could help these students these days getting a bit better understanding of their professions and equip them with some useful skills for their future careers. One of the important aspects for us has always been um, to open the world of modern technology for students. So these days technology provides access uh, to many resources and enables people with disabilities to live better lives and find really interesting career opportunities. 
Additionally, we aim to provide students ability to present and practice their soft skills. We all know um, how important these days presentation skills are um, and uh, in the business world, and we all use you know, those skills almost every single day at our jobs. And the last, but actually one of the most important uh, goal for us has been to inspire students for their professions, for future development and learning opportunities, and also to inspire them for being open to all of the above. Um, next slide, Olga, the other slide. Um, let me share with you some of the details of the program. Um, hopefully the slide will, you know, change. Olga, the other slide. Uh, okay, I will I will continue talking. Yeah, good. Thank you. So um, the program is based on the mentorship relations between student with disabilities and mentor. So all these relations, uh, student who also we call mentee, solve real life business case in selected profession. Uh, business cases are developed by the mentors based on their experience and experience of mentees. Those cases are a miniature version of the business situation at the mentor's company and used to facilitate learning. Uh, now, depending on the initial student level, business case work gets supported by a teaching and coaching by, uh, done by the mentors. And the ultimate goal for the mentee will be to finalize the business case by the end of uh, the program, which is six weeks, and have it presented to the teammates and other mentors. It is very important to mention that the program does not aim to select the best business case solution or the best mentee. First of all, all business cases are very different and tailored for the experience and level of knowledge of students. But also, secondly, we see the final presentation as the forum to practice soft skills and presentation skills, where we can then share some feedback for future improvements, but not providing any judgments. Uh, we feel that presentation itself is stressful enough experience for many students, thus we target to build atmosphere of trust and comfort for such uh, closing presentation. The program always combined in-person and online interaction, where we aim to have in-person kickoff and closing meetings in the office, ideally, and remote work between mentor and mentee during the project. Now, pandemic in 2020 fully transitioned us online, and it all worked actually pretty well. Um, and now thinking kind of ahead, regardless of these temporary limitations that we have, um, ability to run the program remotely has always been important to us because it allowed us to invite students from all over the countries, as well as to invite mentors from all over the world where we have uh, Microsoft uh, offices. And also looking at the evolution, and um, that's what you can see on the slide as well. So we started with the Andrew Perspectiva in 2015, having just two professions included finance and IT, and only 12 students. Over the last few years since, we've had seven groups of program graduates, managed to increase the amount of professions up to seven in some years, and build partnership with four other international uh, companies whose mentors are very actively engaging into the program these days. Um, if we go to the next slide, or you go to the other slide, um, I wanted to talk a bit more about the engagement model in this program, uh, because this is the base of keeping this program up and running for many years. First of all, in the key enablement of the program is the NGO perspective. So the NGO plays the vital role in the program without which, uh, honestly, it wouldn't exist at all, not speaking about you know, its development and evolution. So what is the role that um, NGO plays in this program? So Perspectiva searches and selects students from all over the country for this program, and we fully rely on it um, for the selection process as uh, Perspectiva has the competences, knowledge, expertise um, that we actually don't have for such process. Um, NGO is also a great connector between us and other businesses that potentially can participate in the program. So this is exactly where the NGO supported us uh, proactively um, and helped to find these other four international companies um, that we've managed to invite uh, to the program and with this to expand the program further. It is also important to mention the educational role the NGO is playing in this program by training mentors in etiquette for dealing with people with disabilities. This education is critical and really an eye opener for the vast majority of mentors. It shares with them the most effective ways for cooperation with students. 
and provide the li right level of confidence, especially for those mentors who take part in the program for the first time. And the last but not least, um, I have to mention the role of uh, you know, NGO perspective and orchestration of students throughout the program, the timely feedback delivered to us as coordinators in the companies if something doesn't go right. And the situation can be very different during the program and having such partner as Perspectiva helped us to find the best solution in such situations for mentors and mentees in almost all the cases, just to ensure that uh, mentee can finish the program successfully. The other element of the program are mentors. They're actually the main people who are getting in front of the students. Though we don't have a very formal technical criteria for mentor selection, there are a few requirements that they really need to meet still. First, they have to be passionate about helping and supporting others. They should be able to dedicate at the minimum a few hours a week for direct engagement with their mentees and definitely be agile and have the right level of emotional intelligence to adapt to mentees' needs and experience. Once and if potential mentors can demonstrate all of the above, we're very happy to include them into the program. And statistically, um, for Microsoft, we have a big number of mentors who participate in the program over multiple years, which we internally definitely treat as a success. And the third element of the program in its heart is our students. So our mentees typically will be students or fresh graduates from different universities, will be motivated for learning and development, and will be able to dedicate also a few hours uh, per week for the program. Over the years, we've learned that the major success factor is motivation. Motivated students are able to find their way through the business case, overcome the challenges, uh, because cases, uh, business cases sometimes are not always easy and require a different skill set versus a standard university education. You have one less than a minute left. Yep, I'm good. Can we go to the okay. next slide? So just to summarize, um, let me finish with some results of the program. So the main beneficiary of the program are students who gain experience and knowledge. We've had some cases when as a result of the program, mentees realize that they've been trying the wrong profession and early enough have been able to change the gear and found themselves successful in other professions. Though some students can get a job in mentoring organization, the program itself does not aim employment in there. However, every student receives a certificate of program completion and then, is included, um, then it is included in the CV and improves the employment opportunity. And of course, some students and mentors are becoming a good friends to continue a con a communication after the program. Talking about the benefits for the mentoring organization, let me speak for Microsoft. So for us, it's a definitely a true and the most sincere realization of our company mission. It also gives us um, and the mentors opportunity to demonstrate the community support and increase our sense of purpose and engagement. And over the years, this program has developed and nourished our volunteer culture. Can I wrap up? Yeah. Please wrap it up. Yeah, and with that, I actually wanted to thank everyone for the opportunity to speak and hopefully um, our program can inspire others to do something you know, interesting for their companies and communities. Okay. Thank you. So much, Maria. Okay, we're moving on quickly because time is moving quickly. One hour passes very fast. Okay, now I would like to present or to introduce to you Asya Rutskaya. She has been at Philip Morris International for more than 12 years and currently holds the position of manager of talent, performance, and inclusion and diversity. And she started the process of hiring people with disabilities um, at the company. Um, back in what 2017 and today 59 people with disabilities uh, have taken part in their employment program and to, to, they have 23 people on staff today so Asya uh, uh Ruth, I'd like to give you the floor Eight yeah minutes. thank you yeah thank you I will be as quick and clear as possible so thanks a lot Microsoft uh, I hope uh, uh, everyone can see my screen and actually yes Microsoft inspired us um, four years ago, I think back in 2016, when they uh, spoke about this program, which they were just presenting. And so we started uh, hiring people with disabilities in 2017. And then we were partnering uh, and we are partnering with Perspectiva who showed us how we can do that. And so as we grew in, the, in that direction, we started to want to do something all of our own with our um, uh, rules and of course uh, with the um, with the supporters of perspectiva as well so we opened the equal opportunities business school 
So what is it for us? So this is the school aimed to support people with disabilities in the questions of employment so that we increase their competitiveness am among employers and we share the knowledge which we have in terms of uh, personal development and career development. For us, it means uh, that we can have more new candidates with disabilities uh, for potential hiring. We can increase the engagement of internal employees by making them mentors and speakers for the school. And we also make another step ahead to ruin the biases on people with disabilities in our company. So what we did, we took, we, um, we did uh, made that school very quickly. So in September, 2020, we developed the concept. In October, we, we collected profiles and selected the candidates. In November, we started. So our school continue, uh, um, consisted of educational parts. So we gave uh, 10 trainings and all in all, we, uh, we held 13 events. And we also had the mentorship, uh, mentorship program. And in December, we finalized the educational part uh, and also the mentorship part. So uh, as the uh, mentorship part finished with the cases presentation for the whole community of me mentors and uh, students with disabilities. So uh, we received in the beginning 95 profiles, 42 people uh, went through educational part and uh, 10 people went through mentorship part. So we benefited from the 2020 situation. And so we made this school in a distant format. So we uh, first, first uh, in our uh, PMI Russia history, we could tap into the talents with disabilities uh, through the whole Russia. And so we uh, uh, had the possibility to see the candidates from uh, very distant parts of Russia. So uh, in, uh, in the end, uh, what are our results? So average net promoter score on educational part, it's 69. So we invited 16 internal speakers and we had 10 internal mentors. Uh, average rating of the program was five out of five by mentors. So by th those two, uh, 10 people who uh, had people with disabilities in their projects. And in the end, uh, we granted five career consultancies and uh, five uh, CV expert advisors. Uh, we finished the, the school in December and like the first, um, first success is that we already hired two people with disabilities out of it and from this project. So as uh, Microsoft, we are not uh, going to make it a one-off event. event. We are going to continue that and to repeat it. So uh, if you have any interest in that, please uh, feel free to connect with me. That's it. I was short, Dennis. Thank you. Awesome. Great. We'll have time for questions at the end. So now I have the pleasure of introducing you to Vera Salamatina. And Vera is the Human Resources Director at SAP, IT, and GR. She is in charge of developing strategies for talent acquisition and developing, developing and implementing new practices in HR management at SAP. She has more than 20 years experience in the field of personnel management and 15 in the field of IT. So it's, you've got the floor. Vera. Colleagues, thank you very much. Do you hear me well? Okay, that's great. So let's continue. Uh, click. So uh, while we are opening the presentation, I hope. Uh, so I will explain so many presentations and they are all talking about students. And uh, we all know that uh, in Russia, we are lacking the people with the disabilities on the professional specialities. So we have a lot of people whom can we help uh, to receive the speciality that they can um, uh, be hired on the market. And so I will tell you today about our project, which is, which is called Digital Inclusion, about the hiring of employees with disabilities in technological companies. Can I please have the next slide? Uh, so just a few, uh, mm, few 
words about my role. I was previously human resources director for SAP CIS uh, for Russia and uh, nine countries. And uh, starting from 1st of January, I am the human resources director for SAP Italy and Greece. So this IT and GR means Italy and Greece. So I have changed the role, but I hope that I will continue my uh, job uh, in uh, hiring people with disabilities also in my new location. So why SAP is doing such a great job? Uh, to hire and to give people with disabilities uh, so great opportunities. So first of all, we are thinking about our employees' engagement because we understand while we have started our project and while we have started to hire people with disabilities in the company, we see that the, our employees started to be more engaged in their work in the life of the company. They offered some ideas how to promote people with disabilities, how to do some excursions, some lectures, etc. So we see that the idea uh, uh, was beloved by our employees. The second point is uh, about innovation because we believe that people are different people who are working in one uh, department in one um, specific area they can create new ideas only if they are different really and so uh, we have great experience when two our students um, participated in great events uh, or, um, or created some interesting ideas for SAP for our new products and innovations. And so the third part why SAP is thinking about uh, uh, inclusive hiring is that uh, uh, this project uh, uh, gives us the opportunity to increase the loyalty of our customers because uh, we have uh, provided um, uh, students with the disabilities with the projects uh, to our customers and customers were really interested and happy and uh, so they have decided also to start with such a project to hire people with disabilities can i have next slide please uh, so we have understand that uh, uh, we cannot hire the people with disabilities on the russian market with the level of seniority and with the level of expertise that we need on our professional position. And I, it seemed to me that uh, most of Russian companies are facing with such a challenge. So we have decided to uh, change the mindset and uh, uh, we uh, decided to give to students and to people with disabilities uh, the opportunity to pass the internship. Uh, to gain the knowledge and we know all that during this COVID situation and this year of uh, coronavirus uh, most of the people from IT sphere they started to work distantly and we thought that also this distant work will be very great opportunity for all the people with disabilities to receive great job and so also I would like to remind you that SAP is a technological company and we have a lot of partners and we have a lot of clients. So they have demand on professional people. So we uh, decided to put, to hire these people, uh, to put uh, these people not only in SAP, but to our customers and to our partners also. Can I have please the next slide? Thank you. And so our journey was very interesting. So we understood we, we cannot hire uh, people on current position. So we just, asked people with disabilities please tell us what do you want to do what are your career aspirations and we have opened the positions for them can i have uh, the next slide please uh, and so our journey was very short and interesting first of all we have changed the mindset and have changed the hiring concept we closed all the positions and uh, we open our heart to the people. So then after, the most important thing was to find the uh, motivated candidates. And here, 100% our uh, great partner, Perspectiva, they helped us a lot, not only with the candidates itself, but with the contacts of the higher universities, with the contacts of other, other funds who are dealing with different nosologies to help uh, to find proper candidates. Then we have started internships uh, in the company. And so we hired people and asked them, what do you want to do? Consulting, development, marketing, administrative work, finance, uh, legal, etc. And so we have placed them into the company according to their aspirations. So what is after? We gave them knowledge. We gave them mentorship, coaching, partnership of our employees, engaged employees who were very happy to participate in such a project. And then after, 
you know, only after we have started to hire them on the professional positions. But these people were uh, with knowledge, with expertise, and also uh, with the understanding of the culture of the company. It's very important. So for now, we have uh, more than six people that were hired on professional positions within SAP or partners or customers. And so uh, more than 15 people who are continuing with their internship. And so the main thing that we all doing now here, that we can, as a big companies, influence the culture around us. So we can tell about our experience to companies. We can tell about our experience to other people who are working with uh, employees. And so we can tell everybody that please start do the same projects. And so can I please have uh, the next slide? And so the main idea of our project is uh, to make digital world accessible to everyone. So colleagues, please, my ask, my request to you, continue what you are doing this great job and tell everybody that they can do the same great job. Thank you very much, colleagues. That's all from my side. Thank you. You guys were very just right on time. Um, I see something very important message coming in from somewhere, but thank you so much, Vera, and, and all of your best practices. Um, we have, I don't, I didn't notice any questions in the Q&A, but send questions. If anyone has a question, you can send it to the Q&A, or you can also put it in the chat box. Something just appeared in the chat box. But I have a question about, um, actually, I have a few questions, but one is connected to corporate culture and how these programs, you kind of touched on this, but if you could briefly mention how these kinds of programs change uh, corporate culture. Just that's, that's my first question. So any of you can answer it. Well, I think if uh, I can start, so uh, not only that particular um, uh, program, but any hire, any fact of hiring a person with disability uh, changes uh, the culture and the team. And so, and uh, it's, uh, it is spread viral. So uh, once a first person with disability gets into a team, then the team changes and they start to seed uh, this good idea of having different people, of not being biased, and of being able to share what they know about professional world with other people. So like helping doing something good, but working uh, during your work time. Because I know that our people, they invest a lot into um, programs, they support uh, elderly houses, I don't know, uh, um, places where cats or dogs kept, so, um, and, uh, and uh, um, they also can invest during their work time in something good and bright. So uh, in the beginning, it was very tough for us. 2017, it was difficult. Mm -hmm. Now you can okay. see uh, people with disabilities everywhere in PMI offices. Um, for, for us, it's important Anyone else to say something about that. Just yeah. can you hear me? Uh -huh. Okay, because I I, don't, yes. I I I think you are not uh, you don't see me, but. but. Um, apart from the, the, the improvement of the, um, the, the, um, the climate change, so the climate, the, climate, the labor climate, um, and the, in the companies and the, um, um, the, the, the aspect related to the human resources, um, it's important as well the aspect of uh, efficient or, um, efficacy because when you have uh, different uh, people, uh, diverse people in your in your teams. And you improve the design of your products. You take into account the different aspects to different clients. So we make an, an, an a survey related to this uh, to explain to the companies that first, if they take into account people with disabilities, they take into account families and elderly people as well, and they include um, in their products and they in their servicing design other aspects that allow them compete um, easily to the other companies that they don't, uh, uh, they don't in, uh, in, um, engage 
the the um, this uh, this principle. So. Okay, thank you. So I have one final question. If you could give, like, if you had to give advice to uh, either another company or a nonprofit starting a similar program, what would you tell them? Two things, each person. So let's start with Maria. I think the one thing I would say, just don't be afraid to try and uh, really, you know, try different things and um, share the inspiration uh, of such program with others because that inspires people to try. Okay, great, thank you. Asya? So it's very practical, go to your management team first. Uh, drive by example, mm -hmm. by their example. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Okay, Vera? Uh, from my point of view, uh, it's important to find alternative ways, not to go into the doors that are closed, but to think how we can do it uh, in some new, more interesting way. Mm -hmm. You mean alternative? You mean how you could develop this program differently or alternative ways? I'm, I, could you clarify that? Oops, did you hear me? Yes. I think we lost Vera. No, no, no. I'm here. I'm just uh, uh, switched off uh, the video. So I mean that uh, we okay. cannot, we, we, we failed with the standard hiring. And so we have find the alternative way. We have okay. open internships. Gotcha. So I it, mean this. So looking for different kinds of programs to, to, um, to help promote employment in the company. Gotcha. Yes, okay, we have exactly. one more person. So we're gonna give, you'll be, you'll be the last person here. Wait, who do we have? We had um, Asia, I'm, I'm missing someone. Virginia and um, Maria, Virginia. Ah, so you all spoke. So that so we're gonna have to close because Zero Project is asking us to close. Thank you again to our speakers for sharing your experiences. This was wonderful. And I hope that this was useful for all of our listeners. We have listeners we can see and then listeners that are our screen. And I hope that this will provide some programs. Thanks again to everyone. Have a wonderful day, evening, whatever, wherever you are. And I look forward to seeing all of you guys in the future. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Ciao.